What's going on guys? Welcome to your 43rd C++ tutorial and in this tutorial I'm finally going to be explaining to you guys those things called deconstructors. You know whenever we created a class and it said automatically create a deconstructor or whatever and we had it unchecked? Well I'm going to explain to you guys what they are, um, when they're used and then you know when we're creating a class from now on we can understand what they mean. So the first thing I want to say is a deconstructor is basically code that runs automatically upon the destruction of your object and that's the technical term for it but basically at the end of your program when all your memory is getting freed up and your programs ending and all your objects are getting destroyed and you want a last little bit of code to run that's when your deconstructor is going to run so you know as soon as you create an object the constructor runs well as soon as it's deleted the deconstructor runs so that's basically you know when that happens so let's go ahead and first before I even start talking about a deconstructor let's go ahead and type some code into our constructor like um see out I am the constructor and make sure you spell it wrong and then end that line so now we can see if we go ahead in the main cpp and create come on keyboard type regular and create a sally object so sally um so and then after this we really fire truck are you really gonna run right behind me in the middle of this tutorial No, that's not annoying. <laughs> well, that was kind of annoying, but anyways, continuing on. So we went ahead and we created a Sally object. Now, as soon as we create this object, our constructor is going to run, and all our constructor does is shout out, I am the constructor on the screen. So now we go ahead and type another line of code, like C out, um, OMG, what DF is this on my shoe, or something stupid like that and in that line. So let's go ahead and run our program so far. So our object was created and it shouted out I am the constructor automatically. We didn't have to call a specific function, it just did autom automatically and then our program ran that said OMG WTF is this on my shoe. So now let's go ahead and add a deconstructor. Now to create a deconstructor it's as simple as this. The name of your deconstructor is the tilde, and that's above the tab on your keyboard, but under the escape, it'll, well, that's where it is on mine. If you look left of the one, um, you see that little squiggly sign? It's called a tilde, I think. At least that's what I call it. So go ahead and type that, and then type your class name, which is Sally. So basically, your deconstructor looks the exact same as your constructor, except it has that little squiggly tilde above it. So now let's go ahead and create the body of it. And again, it's the exact same as your constructor, except it has that little squiggly tilde right before it. So another thing I want to point out is this. Whenever you're creating a destructor, it has no parameters. No matter what, you can never give it parameters. Also, it never has a return value. You can't even give it void. And aside from that, there's no deconstructor overloading. You have one deconstructor and that's it. You can't have different versions of your deconstructor. So basically, it's a pl Really? Another fire truck? Are you serious? This is gonna run right past me. You guys hear that? Yeah, I'm just continuing on with my tutorial anyways. <laughs> and I really don't feel like redoing it, so sorry guys. So basically, whenever your object is first created, your constructor is going to run. And whenever your object is automatically deleted or, you know, um, destroyed, I mean, that's the technical term for it, your deconstructor is going to run. So let's go ahead and type some code and see out I am the deconstructor and make sure you type that very wrong and then go ahead and end that line and let's go ahead and take a look at our main and I'll explain to you guys what's going on our first line of code we created a Sally object so right after it right around here our constructor is going to get called and our constructor shouts out I am the constructor so then after this it goes ahead and it runs the program OMG WTF is this on my shoe so the next line of code is going to be did is going to be this, excuse me. Now, after this line of code is running, it's going to see that it got to the end of the program. Whenever it gets to the end of your program, C++ automatically destroys all your objects. So, 
by default automatically is going to call your deconstructor for this object right here. So let's go ahead and build and run this and see what happens. I am the constructor, OMG, WTF is this on my shoe, and I am the deconstructor. So as you can see, it automatically called the deconstructor and constructor for us. So another thing I want to point out is when your program is finished running that's when your deconstructor is going to get called so again your constructor and your deconstructor you don't have to explicitly call them like you would another function inside your class they get called automatically and again remember whenever you're creating your constructor it's basically a duplicate of the constructor except you need a little tilde right there and unlike a constructor you can't overload it it can't have parameters, it can't have a return value, and make sure you don't even put void as the return value. It's basically a dumbed down, very simple function. So that's the very basics of a constructor and a deconstructor, and later on I'm going to be showing you guys why a deconstructor is useful other than just printing out stuff on the screen. But for now, just understand the concept, and I'm going to go ahead and help these fire trucks put out a fire, so hopefully in the next tutorial they will stop running past me. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.